and welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, I wanted to give you guys a guide on how to read black literature, where to start. Now I've told you guys time and time again where I was never a reader and when I decided to get back into reading like four, almost five years ago, I knew that I wanted to read black literature. But because we have so much, I became overwhelmed and I didn't know where to start. Also too, my main goal was to read not just books and novels by popular, you know, Black people. I wanted to also read, you know, The Hidden Gems. I classify them as unsung Blacks because they don't get the praise and recognition as they should. So I knew I wanted to focus on that. And then obviously in conjunction with, you know, well-known Black authors and writers. So by me trying to see what I like, what I don't like, what genre I like, what author I like, everything, I really thrived on anthologies and I've told you guys this before so let's just get started. The first book that I got was Black Voices. Now I got this on Amazon. It's in my storefront. It's an anthology of African-American literature and it has fiction, it has poetry, it has autobiographies um, and some critical analysis. You know for me I wanted to really focus on literature books as opposed to you know like poetry and short stories and things like that. And this one has everyone from you got James Baldwin, you got Langston Hughes, Gwendolyn Brooks, everything. I did not know, I remember when I was, uh, I remember when I got this, I did not know that W.E. Du Bois did short stories and novels. I just thought he did like nonfiction critical analysis. You guys know he's a sociologist. So I was surprised when I got this and I saw a short story by him, some, you know, fiction. I was like, oh, okay. Now you guys know how much I love Harlem Renaissance. That is my favorite genre ever. That is my favorite, you know, time period to read during the 1920s, 1930s. And because I want to get more immersed in that time frame, I had to pick up the anthology that was published during that time. And it is called The New Negro, it's edited by Aileen Locke. This is the stepping stone. This is where it all began. You have everyone from uh, Zora Neale Hurston. You have uh, Jean Toomer, Rudolph, uh, Rudolph Fisher. You have um, Eric Walden, he's lesser known. Who, I mean, you have so many people when I tell you. Again, if you are looking to get introduced to Harlem Renaissance, this is where you should start. All right, next is plays. Now I'm not really a play person. So the first one that I picked up is this. It's called Nine Plays by Black Women. And this has plays from uh, B. Richards, Lorraine Hansberry, Alice Childress, Elaine Jackson, Catherine Collins. Now. I was surprised with this collection because B. Richards, I only knew B. Richards as an actress. She was nominated for Academy Award for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. What else was she in? She was in Mahogany. She played Diana Ross's um, aunt or whatever. But she's an actress. And I had no idea that she wrote plays and poetry. And then because I read this and got into this, Alice Childress is a playwright that no one really talks about. I did a vlog on her book what was that book called like one of the families not only writes plays she writes novels and that was hilarious i was cracking up reading that book another book i got a couple of months ago because i did want to read more plays is black literature usa this is plays by african americans now what i like about this you guys these are plays that not a lot of people know not a lot of people talk about and I, I tab I think I did a video also on this too because I was so excited to read more literature by unknown black people. And I would say what was my favorite? For Unborn Children by Mildred Smith Livingston. That one was a good one. I do have a video on this, like um talking about you know this book and going through each place. So I'll put that down below. Okay, next is my favorite, which is contemporary literature that's like my favorite okay next to historical fiction and I was able to find an anthology and I was so happy because it's edited by one of my favorite authors and that is Terry McMillan this y'all if y'all want to again read contemporary fiction please get this anthology you have everyone from Terry McMillan you have Jay California Cooper Tony K. Bambara uh Trey Ellis Percival Everett Author Flowers, Artist Gaines, Marita Golden, Charles Johnson. I mean, everyone. And this has a mix of well-known authors and not so well-known authors. And she did a fantastic job with this. This actually was printed in the, I want to say, 90s. Um, 
yeah 1990 also anthologies is a really good way to find out what you like and what you don't like i noticed for me when i was going through these anthologies poetry is not my jam i appreciate it and understand why we have it clearly and there's some poets that i like but that's not a genre that i just gravitate towards okay but i was aware of that because i got into these anthologies speaking of poetry i have two for you guys and the first is American Negro Poetry. American Negro Poetry. This is edited by Anna Bottom. He was well known during the Harlem Renaissance. And this has everyone from Paul Lawrence Dunbar, James Watt and Johnson, Anne Spencer. No one really knows her. Claude McKay, Fenton Johnson. No one really knows him. Richard Wright. So this is a good one. And I have this. This is the poetry of Black America, and this is edited by Gwendolyn Brooks. We all know Gwendolyn Brooks, or we should, okay? She was a poet. She is known for We Real Cool. Love that, um, by the way. She was published in the 70s, 1973 to be exact. And again, you have well-known and not well-known. Next is short stories. Now, I learned to appreciate short stories because while I got back into reading, oh, I could not stand short stories. And it was because I did not... Get the concept of them once i started reading more i actually understood okay alexis they are called short stories there are not a novel okay so they're meant to be short and sweet so sometimes you might not get the closure but again short stories is in the title so once i got that in my head then i really started to appreciate then i really started to appreciate more the person that can do a short story is j california cooper you guys know we are j california cooper stand here okay i recently did a read a book in one day reading her first short story collection and y'all as y'all saw in that video i had a blast because she like i said can do short stories and this is great short stories by african americans this is a Tho dover thrift editions i love dover thrift editions i've told you guys about them so many times i get a lot of these from amazon dover thrift editions are very very cheap and they have books that are rare this book was like this book was only six dollars once again it has authors that no one really talks about ellis ruth moore but she was the wife of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. You have Gertrude H. Um, Darcy. You have Charles W. Chestnut. We got Zora Neale Hurston. We know her. Uh, Ralph Ellison. Dorothy West. This has so many people I love. Um, we have Alice Walker, Jamaica Kincaid. Another collection that I would highly suggest is Black American Short Stories. And this has short stories again from Ernest J. Gaines, Rudolph Fisher, W. E. Du Bois, Starlin A. Brown. He is really good. Oh, he is so good, you guys. Who else? Um, another person that is really good at short stories is Langston Hughes, which is no surprise. But I only knew Langston Hughes from poetry and I knew obviously his one uh, novel. But he... Oh, his short stories, you guys. Please read his short stories. He, I don't even know how to describe it. He's so underdescribed. He just knows how to craft a good story because of the poetry aspect that he has. But if you're looking for a great short story, please try him. I'm telling y'all, try him, okay? But yeah, this, you guys, I would suggest short stories. This is number one, and this is also number one. And then lastly, we are going to get into some erotica. Now, no shame in my game. I do like erotica, but I have to take it in doses because the stuff that they do is can be very overwhelming. Also, it ain't for the week, okay? But the person that does erotica like nobody's business to me is Zane. I'm always trying to give Zane her flowers because y'all remember back in the day, when they were pumping up that uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, that ain't nothing to write home about. He ain't do nothing new, okay? Ain't nothing new. Y'all seen the movies, I'm like, oh, that's what you did? Yeah. Zane, she knows how to tell a story and write erotica, okay? And y'all know, what, the stuff we do kind of different, but <laughs> we can discuss that later. But the first one I got, it is called Karma Flava. And again, it's an erotica, so you already know what y'all gonna be dealing with. So a lot of sexy stuff so good and then another anthology that i wanted to get is called black erotica erotica noir and this one is not typical because of course you have authors that are that write mainly that genre but you do have authors like um terry mcmillan chester hines who else alice walker um and strange she's known for colored girls 
four colored girls she has a um what is it a play called four play <laughs> yeah uh i mean yeah they, they got a lot of stuff in here look move to the beat uh naughty nasty and nice take the plunge so yeah if y'all into eroticas i would highly suggest i would highly suggest you guys get this because again not typical but it also has stories that you know are in you know that vein so yeah guys that is it when it comes to getting into black literature again anthologies are your friends because they will tell you what you like what you don't like yeah guys that's all i have for you and i'll be back with more black books bye